I want to talk about copper versus silver this time and also a few angles on copper not just from the financial standpoint but from how copper is used in uh, health and beauty and also how copper can be worth many 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 times more than gold depending on what type of form it is and I can show you where that is and also a conspiracy involving well let's call it a conspiracy but maybe it's not it's JP Morgan might do something to move the price of copper up a great deal and uh, there's some complaints from merchants about this but I don't know if it's uh, a conspiracy I just label it that as such because it seems anything that JP Morgan does is a conspiracy in people's minds now uh, this is actually Chloe she's a um, former fashion model in Italy in Milan and um, she's actually been doing this for a number of years but uh, we're in a particular type of attire that is associated with copper so makes a good association um, as far as what I'm going to first go into actually I'll go into first about what's going on with um, JP Morgan JP Morgan plans to introduce an exchange traded fund linked to copper and initially calls for the removal from the market of as much as 61,800 metric tons of copper or the withdrawal of more than 30 percent of the supplies available for immediate worldwide delivery so the merchants are saying if you do that you're going to drive up the prices artificially because well what can happen is you might see the bigger investors you know the ones that are managing other people's money not individual investors can actually move into this fund and invest and um, it can really drive up the price of copper quite a bit you know if you're using it as a hedge against inflation and actually it's a fairly good hedge against inflation now if we look at um, you know what's happened to copper prices over the last six months it's it's almost like almost a little like the way the silver moved you know we had a bottom here at the end of January except in a case of copper it was more like uh, actually we had a bottom for silver at the end of December 2011 but in the case of copper it was in mid December but still it almost it almost got slammed down again at the end of December very closely followed in a way uh, what was going on with silver not too bad of a correlation because what's going on in the markets is affecting all the commodities I mean really what's going on that is it I mean in a nutshell that's what's going on uh, silver should perform better than copper but you know I always state you don't need to have all your eggs in one basket and I did point out the physical nickels contain 75 percent copper and actually even as of right now the melt value of a nickel is above the actual face value so where the heck could you buy a coin that's cheaper than the, the melt value? Nowhere. Nowhere. I think it's going to come off the market this year. But, you know, copper's been going down. But, you know, if J.P. Morgan's doing this, they used to talk about um, a, what do you call it, a conspiracy that, <laughs> you know, I don't know if this is a conspiracy, but, you know, it was talked about J.P. Morgan was to invest heavily in copper. This is like they're talking about this last year because they're going to lose so much on their short position on silver so that would be a way to protect them I think a lot of these things are just nothing but rumors I mean I think they're just offering a product that's probably going to protect people from inflation and uh, what's going to happen is you know the price of copper is going to go up the value of the dollar is going to go down and that type of thing now as far as the dollar index going down I don't know you know I hear a lot of conflicting stuff on that I mean I actually read things that state that the dollar index is going to go up and some people say it's going to go down because of what's happening with the Chinese yuan. I personally think it's going to go down but I think the dollar will do better than the euro and I think it will I think it will it's not going to completely go to um, oblivion like a lot of people are, who are investing in the metals are thinking that it's going to go to oblivion like in Zimbabwe or where my republic in Germany it's not going to do that even despite all the debt that's going on they got they got something up their sleeve believe me I don't know exactly what it would be but the dollar's not going to go away that easily because this is not a very small they're not going to wreck the United States a hundred percent I'm going to state this not from facts that I could pull out but just from my understanding of how the mentality is of the elite you know and um, 
I still want to go over something else. Well, you know, first I'm going to point out about here's like copper that is um, <laughs> worth more than gold. Uh, actually, this stuff was worth like uh, a few thousand euros or more a gram. And here, this is showing uh, 574,368,000 euros. Now, I got this heavily redacted because, you know, I'm displaying it on the internet so nobody knows what the hell it is. But actually, this is how they used to, um, in France, they would do something else. I forgot what it was, how they would verify that the goods were so, such and such stored in a certain place. In Russia, they used this thing called a double warehouse certificate. And this was in a town of Krasnovarst, Russia. Uh, located on 60 years of the October Revolution Street, you know, and um, actually this was a person, you know, this was actually one of the smaller deals we were, we were attempting, and um, <laughs> small, right, over a half a billion euros, like, you know, you'd love to get like even a quarter of a basis point of this junk, but never happened, never happened, you know, and it kind of pissed me off, it didn't really piss me off to tell you the truth, because I think certain people were just idiots, idiots to the max. But what I did find, what you might find interesting, that the person that has this lump of stuff, this is part of his holdings, and he's related to, well, the former president, uh, Medvedev. You know, I think he's saying his name correctly. I'd never say it right, but that's that's who he is. He's one of them. These guys, are, the guys on the top in Russia got some unbelievable wealth. And this is just part of it. So, I mean, you know, they, this won't show up on the books anywhere, you know. So it doesn't show up on a balance sheet. I mean, Forbes goes around asking people. I don't even think Forbes asks anybody what the hell their wealth is in any realistic fashion. But, you know, you can have, you can own a, for example, besides met, uh, metals, you can own a forest. And maybe the trees might be worth a billion dollars, you know, net after they're harvested. And, you know, what is the value? That's eh, zero, right? I mean, I've seen a number of things like that. So, you know, <laughs> as far as the people having, you know, what kind of wealth some of the people on the top have, they have a lot more than you think. Um, now, I also want to point out, you know, something else about um, copper applications in health and the environment. This is a very good article. Actually, I want to reference the link on it. But before I actually get into that, I want to show that um, Israel Israel researchers rediscover copper cures. Israeli researchers have rediscovered what the ancients knew thousands of years ago about the healing properties of copper. So it's being rediscovered. You know, I actually pointed out before that actually the Israeli medical establishment is number one per capita in using medical marijuana on people that need it. So they actually have a pretty good attitude towards medicine. Much better than the United States it seems, you know, but I don't know. I don't know what the deal is over here. It seems like in Germany, Japan, and Israel, they seem to have a better medicine than the United States. More conscientious people, and of course, China. Now, I also want to go over this. I know this is more of an investment thing. I'm talking about copper, but I also want to talk about you know, some of the uses of copper, because even though it's so cheap, they say it's about $3.50 a pound, this stuff actually is got a lot of uses. The first, um, it's basically very strong for antibacteria, and it's used also in beauty products to a great degree. Now, you can actually make cheaper beauty products with this by just grinding up the copper supplement and putting it in a cream where you grind up the copper supplement into a very fine powder and mix it into the beauty cream, you actually improve it. Uh, because copper applied to the skin, you know, in other words, the bright type of copper, not metal per se, applied to the skin actually will increase collagen production and remove wrinkles. It's actually been shown help remove wrinkles and that type of stuff. The first recorded medical use of copper is found in Smith Papyrus, one of the oldest books known. The pap papyrus is an Egyptian medical text written between 2600 and 2200 BC, which records the use of copper to sterilize chest wounds and to sterilize drinking water. You might notice that even on the roofing of a house, if they ever use copper flashing, which they don't pretty much do anymore because it's more expensive, 
But if you notice there's on the roofing of a house copper flashing where the rain runoff is, you'll notice the roof is clean where the rainwater was running off the copper flashing because microscopic particles of copper actually will come off on the roof surface and kill all the germs. It works like silver does in that effect, in that way. Maybe not quite as good of an antibiotic, but it's still very effective and it's been used, you know, they have colloidal copper that works as an antibiotic. In the uh, Hippocritical collection, namely, not entirely, for named basically for the uh, Greek physician 460 to 380 BC, copper is recommended for the treatment of leg ulcers associated with varus crow's veins to prevent the infection of fresh wounds. The Greeks sprinkled a dry powder composed of copper oxide and copper sulfite on the wound. Another antiseptic treatment of the wound at the time was boiled mixture of honey. Honey, big time miracle food. I want to mention that right now. Bees honey is a big time miracle food. Actually take that every day in red copper oxide. Um, also Cyprus, Kypros, which from the Latin name for copper, cuprum is derived. That's where copper was the big mine. And actually that's where they got Venus, the goddess, came from the island of Cyprus. You know, you have co copper associated with Venus, which is associated with women and beauty. By the time the Roman physician Celsius began practicing medicine during the reign of Tiberius. Copper and its derivatives had been firmly established as an important drug in the medical practitioner's, you know, book that he needs, <laughs> pharmacopoeia. Now, that's, it it's already was established by the time, around the time of Christ, that copper was a big time medicine needed in treating various things. It's true. It's true. Problem is, it's three dollars and fifty cents a pound. So what do you do there, right? Pharmaceutical ripoff community, whatever you want to call them. That's what I call them. Now I'm going into some of this because I think it's actually kind of boring to talk about just the metal itself. And you know, everybody knows all about silver and every damn use there is, and maybe more uses you don't even want to know about. Now copper, could it actually explode in price? Well, it could. It could do pretty well. I don't think it's going to do as well as silver, but I think it's going to do okay, to tell you the truth. And remember, physical nickels are 75% copper. You can't go wrong there. You're, you're getting some fiat money that actually also already has a melt value beyond the actual face value. And it goes on to some other ancient treatments. For the treatment of venereal disease, for example, Celsus, Kelsus, which is the ancient uh, Roman physician, prescribed a remedy consisting of pepper, mirth, saffron, cooked antimony sulfide, and copper oxide. So they know how to treat these things way back then. Pliny, Pliny, very famous doctor in Roman times, described a number of remedies involving copper. Black copper oxide was given with honey. Honey, another miracle food. Do not forget that. To remove intestinal worms. Diluted and injected as drops into nostrils, it cleared the head and when taken with honey or honey water, it purged the stomach. It was given for eye roughness, in other words, pink eye, eye pain, mistiness, ulcerations of the mouth. It's an antibacteria. You can't beat this stuff. $3.50 a pound. Now, you actually have to take, you know, it can't be the actual form that you're taking out of the metal out of the ground. I mean, you sometimes actually, to tell you the truth, but even that has some uses. Where some people are sedating that copper bracelets seem to help them with arthritis. That may not just be a placebo effect at all, because copper miners never used to get arthritis or rheumatoidism. They found this out in the ancient times. They found this out in the 1800s again. They found this out in the 1900s. Somehow copper helps with arthritis. So you know, the copper bracelet and arthritis. Is probably more than a placebo effect or something going on there. Uh, also, regarding the Aztecs, they used to take and gargle it with a certain mixture containing copper for heat of the throat, they would call it, uh, sore throat. Uh, copper was employed in ancient India, also in Persia, to treat lung diseases. Also, you look back in the 10th century book, it talked about that. Now, uh, in 1885, the French physician Luton reported that using copper acetate in his practice to treat arthritic patients. They found that out from people who worked in the copper mines. They wouldn't get arthritis. And they also found this out again in Germany. And also, I want to point out that it was Queen Cleopatra of Egypt and um, Queen Sheba 
who's um, used to use copper and they used to grind it up in a very 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 fine powder and mix it in with paste and apply it to their skin and face because actually it does have a great deal of properties that preserve skin to help reduce collagen and elastin and which thus actually will work against uh, formation of wrinkles and aging and that type of stuff also people who are short copper I'm going over some of the medical uses mainly versus the industrial uses but it makes I think it makes the material actually more um, valuable when people realize what else it does besides being in copper wires and things like that and used in the mo windings of electric motors but also um, people who are short copper and they, they can possibly get gray hair from being short copper so what happens is when you take the copper supplement your hair color will restore because copper is used in the production of melanin which is the skin tone and the hair color so it's very vital actually there's certain copper peptides that have been claimed to actually reverse gray hair I don't know I've seen this stuff years ago I've seen it over the various years I've seen it where they take copper peptides for beauty products it could be a very economical smart thing to do it's just I what I do is I'll take like um, hyaluronic acid beauty cream and grind up um, various um, copper supplements to a very very fine powder and put it in there that's exactly how you know Cleopatra did it and stuff like that and that's the stuff that Chloe used to ask me you know so that's how I knew her she was like I was a consultant so that's really kind of what I do a lot of times too but um, it's it works very very well but I don't think you need to spend you know 150 to 200 dollars on uh, beauty products where you can actually take the supplement and put it in a good quality all natural beauty product and grind it up to grind up the supplement to very fine powder and put that in there and what happens is then you have something you know depending on the marketing angle it might cost you you know seven eight dollars it's a hundred percent natural and the golden rule actually is if you don't you can't eat it don't put it on your skin so if you have a product that is like you know shea butter coconut oil aloe vera and uh, avocado oil with some vitamin E in it jojoba oil and then you add the copper to it um, you actually improved it so you know other thing is it's an antibacteria now also I want to point out though that you know again it's probably a very smart investment right now and if you're gonna buy physical coins with copper I would just buy the nickels even though they're mixed with the nickel I would buy them because you really can't go wrong it's a principal protected investment uh, it's interesting that JP Morgan is probably gonna uh, issue this ETF which is going to take 30% of the uh, copper, the readily de develop deliverable copper off the market worldwide, and it may even get be more than that because um, as some of these big fund managers move into this investment, it can actually grow a lot and actually push the price of copper up quite a bit. So I don't know. I mean, that's I'm not sure, but. I think that's probably copper is probably going to be a very good investment too and uh, there is a number of in, in, uh, uses for it you can use colloidal copper almost like colloidal silver too very easy to make but the product itself copper is extremely inexpensive so it's a very good uh, useful product like silver in a way